Let's walk through the process of building Python 3 from source. You might want to do this so you have access to the latest version of Python, even the unreleased testing branches, or your system may have an older version of Python and you want the latest release. I'm going to download the latest testing release of Python and build it in a fresh Debian system. If you need a Linux environment to follow along, check out my previous video on how to install Linux using VirtualBox. You will be able to use this Python that we build like normal, but you'll also have the header and library files if you want to write C extensions for Python or embed Python in a C application. It'll also come with the man pages. The first thing we'll need to do is install a C compiler and a build toolchain. We can do that with sudo apt install build essential. Remember, I'm starting with a fresh Debian 10.8 install. There are a couple ways to get the Python source code. One option is to go to python.org and then go to downloads, source code, and then find the right version. Another option is to get it from GitHub at github.com slash python slash cpython. You can download the master branch directly or choose the specific tag you want and then choose code, download zip. I'm not gonna choose this option either though. You could clone the entire repository, but if you clone the whole thing, it will take a long time because it's really large. But there is a way to clone only a single revision. There's also a way to specify a branch to clone. For example, if we look for tags, we can see the latest one is v3.10.0 alpha six. So, if I open my terminal, I'll quickly install git with sudo apt install git. Since I'm on a fresh machine, I don't have it yet. Then, I'll move to my home directory and run git clone dash dash depth one dash dash branch v3.10.0 a6 and then the URL to the repo https colon slash slash github.com slash python slash cpython. This will clone it into a directory named cpython. It will only download one specific revision since we said depth one, and it will download version 3.10 alpha six since we specified that tag. The process for building is pretty standard. You run the configure script, then you run make and make install. Let's step through it. First, run configure with the dash dash help option to read through all the options. One noteworthy option is the dash dash prefix. This lets you specify the install directory. Another option worth noting is dash dash enable optimizations. For this demonstration, I'll run the configure with the prefix of home slash python 3.10. If we left off the prefix, it would install things to the standard system locations in slash user slash local. When it's done configuring, we simply need to call make. This will take a few minutes to compile everything. When it's done building, you'll have Python built, but if you scroll through your output, you might have a section that says, the necessary bits to build these optional modules were not found. You can fix these by installing the necessary dependencies, which is typically the related development library. You can search the web to figure out what the right package name is for your distribution. You can also use apt cache search to try and find the relevant package. For example, if I use apt-cache search lzma, I can spot the relevant package, lib-lzma-dev. The package names commonly start with lib and ends with dash dev. The dash dev package will have the header files for compiling that we need. 
Let me install all of the necessary packages now for these optional modules. The package names might be slightly different in different Linux distributions, but they'll be pretty similar. Here's the full list of packages for Debian. libbz2-dev, libncurses-dev, libgdbm-dev, libz-dev, tk-dev, libsqlite3-dev, libreadline-dev, libLZMA-dev, libffi-dev, libssl Dash dev. Then we'll need to run configure again. And then run make. Once it's done building, we can run make install or sudo make install. And that'll put all the files in their final location. Since I ran configure earlier with the prefix of my home directory, I don't need sudo when running make install. If you did not specify a prefix, it'll install to the prefix of slash user slash local, and you'll need sudo or to run as root to do that. If we output the path environment variable, we'll see that slash user slash local slash bin comes before slash user slash bin. This means if we install our custom-built Python 2 slash user slash local slash bin, it will take priority over the system Python when we try to run it. So it will become our default for the user. If I move to the Python 3.10 directory in my home, I'll find a few directories. Bin, include, lib, and share. The bin directory contains the most important piece, the Python 3 executable. The include directory contains all the include files needed for Python development, including python.h, which is used for writing C extensions or embedding Python inside another application. The lib directory has all of the Python modules, as well as the libpython.a static library for linking. The share directory will contain the man pages. You can read the man pages directly by calling man and the path to the man page. Since Python 3 comes with virtual environments built in, you can easily call Python directly from the bin directory and invoke the venv module to create a virtual environment. I'll call bin slash python 3 dash m venv and create the virtual environment in my home directory. Then I can activate the virtual environment with source tilde slash vn slash bin slash activate. Now I can check which Python, which pip, and run python dash dash version and confirm that it's all running version 3.10 alpha 6. So now you know how to build Python from source. Let me know if you have any questions.